Hello everyone and welcome to another Revit tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to do a quantity takedown for structural columns and structural framing elements such as your beams and bracings. So let's get started. So let's go to the view tab. So under the create subsection you will find a schedules drop down button over here and we'll be mainly dealing with the schedule slash quantities option. If you clicked on it, then you'll find a new schedule window pop up. So right now I will deal with the structural columns. So it's right over here. And if I clicked on OK, you will see that I will have this schedule properties window. So this is the window where we can select the fields that we want to have in our structural column schedule. So for this video, I'll be mainly putting in things like manufacturer, family and type, section shape, structural material, coding, cost, exact weight, and the length. So if I want to change the position or where the length field will be, I can move it up using the move parameter up button, like so. Or I can move it down using the move parameter down button over here. And if I don't want length, for example, I can just click on remove parameter and it will be out of the schedule fields for our structural column schedule. But in this case, I want length in, so I'll just keep it in and I'll click on OK and Revit would have automatically made the structural column schedule and if you want to edit the fields again you can click on the edit button over here and you can see that there are quite a lot of tabs over here as you can see so if you notice something when you scroll down you can see all these names here so back to editing the fields you can see that we have a filter tab, sorting slash grouping, formatting and appearance. So these names correspond to these options over here in the properties menu. So if I want to quickly get into the filter tab, I can just click on edit for the filter option here. And I'll be automatically in the filter tab of the schedule properties window. So that's a quick tip. So I will go through each one of the columns in this structural column schedule. So starting off with the manufacturer column, you can see that we don't have a manufacturer for our columns here. And our column is a UC 203 by 203 by 60. So we can key in a manufacturer name, for example, I can key in Tata Steel. If I hit the enter key, Revit will show this pop up over here. So since I want to go and apply this change to each of the columns with this code, I'll just click on OK. And every single column of this exact code will be given a manufacturer of Tata Steel since I keyed it in for one of the you see columns over here with this code. So for the family and type column, if you were to click on one of the cells, you can see that there's a drop down. This is actually one way that you can change a column. So if I want to change this UC column from 203 to 305, I can do so just by selecting the 305 option here. So if your drawing has more than two column options, you will see multiple UC column options here. So in this case, I only have these two for this drawing. And I'll just stick with the 203 option over here. And for section shape, this basically identifies what section that you have. In this case, I have a I shape white flange member. So the structural material here refers to the material that we'll see in the 3D view. So if I clicked on that small box over there, you can see that this material browser will pop up 
and as you can see for the columns we have a material assigned to it and that is the steel 43-275 material and if you want to change it to any other metallic finish you can do so but in this case I don't need to so I'll just click on cancel and for the coating you can have different coatings for the same column type so for example I can have a anodized coating for one column and a black coating for another it will not show the pop-up that we saw when we try to change the manufacturer so now for the costs we can key in the cost for one of the columns here so for example if the cost of one column is $100 if I hit enter this pop-up will appear so it's the same pop-up that appeared for the manufacturer column when we tried to change the manufacturer so since I want this change to be applied to all of the UC columns with this code I'll just click on OK moving on to the exact weight column we can see that this column is quite self-explanatory so this uh, column is the exact mass of each of the individual columns and there are slight differences because of the difference in steel connections and finally we have our length column over here so this refers to the length of each of the columns so now I'll quickly show you on how we can do a cost tally for our columns here so we can go and click on the edit button for fields and we can move on to the sorting slash grouping tab over here and we can check on this grand totals option over here so this will allow us to calculate the grand total for any particular field moving on to the formatting tab we can find the cost field and we must change it from no calculation to calculate totals over here and click on ok and there we go that's how we can tally the total cost for our columns in this drawing so since we have six columns that cost $100 each we have a total of $600 for columns here and on the very left you can see a grand total of six so this refers to the number of rows that we have here so we have one two three four five six rows over here and that's it for the structural column schedule so let's move on to the structural framing schedule so click on the schedule slash quantities button and find the structural framing category and click on ok so I'll be using the same fields as the structural column schedule so we will see this structural framing schedule and we see that the universal beams are kind of split up in the sense that we have some at the top over here and we have some down over here so we can deal with this issue by just going to the sorting slash grouping tab and we can sort the family and type column if we choose the ascending option over here the family and type field will be arranged in alphabetical order so if I click on OK you can see that the purlins will be first since the first letter is L and if I were to choose the descending option the family and type field will be arranged in reverse alphabetical order like so and the fields such as manufacturer, section shape, structural material and coating, cost and exact weight and length behave in a very similar manner to that of the structural column schedule. A couple of things to note about the purlins is that number one, there'll be nothing defined here in the section shape. It'll just be a not defined title over here. And for the coating, you cannot assign anything to it and you cannot have the exact weight of the individual Perlin members because Revit doesn't have it in its database however you can still do costing for Perlin members for example if I were to type in 5 bucks for one Perlin the same pop-up window will emerge and if I click on OK each one of the Perlins will be assigned a cost of $5 and I will quickly calculate the grand totals for the costs so now that we've already dealt with our structural framing schedule let's quickly bring the 
structural column and structural framing schedules into the sheet. So over here I have a sheet that's opened up, it's called A100 and it contains the level 0 view. And to bring in a schedule is quite simple, I can just scroll down in the project browser and I can find the schedules slash quantities drop down over here. And I can see both the structural column and structural framing schedules over here. So all you need to do in order to bring in a schedule into this sheet is to drag and drop like so. And as you can see, the structural framing schedule is far too long. So I will just omit it for now. And this level zero view, I will quickly make the scale smaller so that we can fit both schedules in this sheet. So I've already rearranged the level zero view. So now let us sort out our structural framing schedule so that we can fit it in this sheet over here. So back to the structural framing schedule over here, we can see that we have plenty of purlins here. So for this video, I will be excluding the purlins from the A100 sheet. So to do so, I need to add a new field. And this new field will be comments. So click on OK. So for the purlins, I will key in the comment exclude. And I will assign it to each of the purlin members here. And what I can do is I can filter out all the fields that have the exclude comment so that I can just keep those that do not have the exclude comment over here. So now that we've already assigned the exclude comment for each of the purlins here, we can proceed to the filter tab. So now that we have our filter tab open over here, we can filter by comments over here. And we should change it from equals to does not equal. And then we select the exclude comment over here. Click on OK. And there we go. We've already excluded the purlins from the structural framing schedule over here. So let's head back to the A100 sheet over here. And if I were to drag in the structural framing schedule. And as you can see, we no longer have to worry about the purlins anymore. And that's it for this Revit tutorial on quantity takedown. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something new about Revit. If you did, please do hit the like button. And if you want to watch more Revit tutorials, do consider subscribing to my channel. It's free. And as always, take care, keep learning, and goodbye.